What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 8 of the Go programming tutorial series. In this part what we're going to be talking about is building on top of these methods. And in the previous tutorial we talked about the value receivers and now we're going to be talking about pointer receiver methods. So the big difference here is that with a pointer receiver we can actually start modifying um, the actual values, the attributes, the things in that actual you know struct type basically or that in our case this this car type what if we wanted to modify a value inside of here? We can't do that with a value receiver. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, to get started, uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is basically we'll just we'll just add it down here. So let's say what we want to do is change the top speed of the vehicle. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to start with funk, and then uh, same as before, right? You're going to pass C in car, but the big difference here is you're going to be using a pointer right you're gonna be pointing through or reading through um, that car type basically so now uh, what we're gonna call this is new top speed and the new top speed is modifying something so we don't actually need to return anything but we do we're all gonna take parameters which would be the new speed which we'll just say is a float 64 so now within here, all we're going to really need to do is c dot top speed kilometers per hour um, equals new speed. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and do is come down uh, here, and we're just going to we can copy this, and then what we'll, what we'll do is we'll just say a a underscore car dot new top speed, and we'll say now the new top speed is. 500 kilometers per hour and then now let's repaste out kilometers per hour miles per hour kilometers per hour miles per hour so let's go ahead and save that we'll come up here and uh, go run go tut dot go and now we can see it's been modified 495 to 308 um, as opposed to you know, the 223 138 so looks like that worked awesome now uh, the next thing I want to just kind of talk about to really bring this point home is like let's say in which one runs first kilometers per hour so in kilometers per hour what would happen if we said c dot top speed kilometers per hour equals 500 so we can see these are this there we go we can see these are the starting values so let's just go ahead and run it one more time and we can see that the kilometers per hour sure enough is is the faster value but then when we get back to miles per hour it's back to being the original and then this is when it was permanently set because we used the pointer so now what would happen though if we converted this one to a pointer receiver so what would we need to do to convert this method here to be a pointer receiver rather than a value receiver um, unfortunately it's super super complicated because we basically just need to do this <laughs> So, so now we'll go up here and we'll rerun this and now we can see that actually these two sets of values are identical uh, because we actually because this is a, a pointer receiver it's modifying the value really it's doing the exact same thing that we were doing right here right so this has modified the value for kilometers not only kilometers per hour but also miles per hour because kilometers per hour is called before miles per hour Obviously, if we were to make miles per hour a pointer receiver and not kilometers per hour, that that wouldn't happen, right? Kilometers per hour would still um, wait. Don't do this to me. Uh, hold on. Okay, <laughs> I was about to just I was about to quit. Okay, so the reason why that worked there was because of this. So let me. Let me get rid of that. But also, I'm a little concerned. Oh, and we didn't we didn't modify the speed. I think I might be almost done recording tutorials for the day if I'm making that kind of a mistake. Anyway, let's run it one more time. Um, so here you can see, obviously, kilometers per hour was unaffected yet, but miles per hour is affected as we should have expected, and then kilometers per hour and so on. <clears throat> so at this point, you, I think, a reasonable person is probably wondering why. Why would I ever use a value receiver, right? Like, what would be the point of a value receiver if a pointer receiver can do the job of a value receiver and a pointer receiver? What's the point? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, um, in general, so what's going on with a value receiver is 
it's making kind of, it's basically making a copy of whatever you're passing. So it makes a copy and then so you could do all kinds of stuff to it and you can rest assured that whatever you do is not going to blow anything up. Um, whereas with the pointer receiver, it's actually going to modify that thing itself. So with a value receiver, if the struct is small, kind of like our struct is, is very small, there's not too many inputs here, um, a value receiver is going to be a better option in terms of efficiency. But if the struct is very large, because this is making a copy, um, the pointer receiver is going to be a more efficient operation. It's just going to have less garbage associated with it. So it really just kind of depends on your your uh, use case. Now, if you go to the text-based version of this tutorial, I link to a, I can actually even just bring it up, um, from the Golang docs, why, like, should I use, here we go, should I define methods on values or pointers? Um, and this is basically that exact question. So, you know, they're saying, yeah, the consideration of efficiency if the receiver's, you know, very large, a big struct, uh, it would be much cheaper to use a pointer receiver because you're not making that copy. But then they have this line here about consistency. Like if the if some of the methods of the type must have a pointer receiver, i.e. it you know needs to modify something, um, then the rest should too. Uh, to me, that makes no. I mean, that's like silly. Why? Why? Like that doesn't make any sense. I mean, people are are people aren't writing Go for its beauty or for like its super simplicity. So like, people are going to be using Go for efficiency. So you should be doing everything for efficiency, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you there, Golang Docs. But, um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, what, I, what I would think it would be the best idea is to write your code. And then if you've got examples where it could be a pointer or it could be a value receiver, um, convert them to value receivers. See if you made huge gains. And if you don't make gains that you care about, okay, fine, make them all pointer receivers. But to make everything... Um, to make everything a, a a pointer receiver just to appease consistency seems kind of silly for a language like Go. So actually, um, that's all I want to talk about with pointers and value receivers. Uh, so the uh, the class is over. You're free to leave, but I do just want to show real quickly um, a function that's going to do basically the exact same thing. Just because I, I suspect some people might be curious. And at this point, you really should be able to write a function in GoLang that's going to do what these methods are doing. Um, but if you want to see me do it, uh, we can go ahead and do that now. So like, let's say rather than using a pointer or a value receiver, what if you, how would you write a function that could do basically the exact same thing? So for example, um, let's just call func newer underscore top speed. And this is going to take a few things. It's going to take C of type car. And then it's going to take a new speed, which will be a float 64. Um, then it's going to return a car type. And then finally, we can do stuff. So what we could say is c dot um, top speed kilometers per hour equals speed. And then we can return speed. And then what we could do is come down here. And rather than a car dot new top speed, we can just redefine a car. So we could say a car, a car equals newer top speed takes the parameter of a car in 500. Did we pass a car newer top speed C car speed is a float 64 returns car clearly I'm just reading this error wrong cannot use speed as type car in return arg oh <laughs> stupid all right let's try again uh, right okay so as you can see there we 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 made our modification basically um it looks a little wonky because we've probably still left yeah that in there so returning back to the way this code should look um, there you have it. So that's a way you could you could just actually just write a function that does the exact same thing as that method, although you're going to have to write over a car, basically. But um, So this is almost certainly not to be as efficient, um, but really just to drive home uh, an example of a function that would 
serve that purpose. So anyways, a little bonus session. Okay, that's all for now. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we're getting back to our web development example.